Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. You're listening to Bulletproof Radio with Dave Asprey. Today's cool fact of the day is that, do you know you have brown and white fat and that cold showers can actually help you lose weight? White fat is the fat you get when you, well, don't have mitochondria that work very well or you eat a lot of inflammatory foods, a lot of sugar and things like that. Brown fat is good fat that keeps you warm and protects you from cold. And what makes it brown is that it has more mitochondria. A study recently showed that exposure to really cold showers ramps up your brown fat activity by only 15 times, and that could translate to about nine pounds a year. Now, as you know, I like to foreshadow the guest. So I just talked about colds. You can probably figure out who the guest is. But while we're doing that, we're talking about mitochondrial function, and somewhere around here I have my stuff. For uh, today's product mention, uh, which you can expect, hey, after all, I make good stuff, I just came out with a couple different methylated B vitamins. It turns out that just about everyone can use methylated B vitamins, but a lot of us, about a third of us, don't handle B vitamins that are are not activated this way. So methylfolate for your heart and neurons and methyl B12, which is really important for uh, all sorts of neurological function. These are things you can take and things that I take every day that improve the ability of your body to do what it's supposed to do. And if you're going to do the stuff we talk about in today's show, which has a lot to do with cold and with having more control of your breathing, then you're definitely going to want to make sure that you give your cells the building blocks to have healthy neurons. So methyl B12, methylfolate, these are things I take every single day, have for years on the Bulletproof Top 10 Supplement list. They're now available from Bulletproof.com. All right, on to the show. Today's guest, if I didn't already give it away, is none other than Wim Hof, also known as the Iceman. He's one of the world's most famed multicellular extremophiles. Now, an extremophile is a single-celled organism that lives near a volcanic vent or at the bottom of a frozen ocean, (laughs) and they tend to be ugly bacteria. Wim Hof is, well, not an ugly bacteria at all. He's a very attractive man, but one who's uh, climbed... Uh, you know, climbed Everest, I think, was it naked carrying ice bags? Okay, not quite, but in shorts. (laughs) And he's developed a breathing and meditation technique that, that's awesome. Uh, It's one of those, those things, he's pretty famous for it. If you've ever seen the ads of, of, of a guy diving into cold water and swimming with seals and things like that, Wim has control of his biology in a way that makes the rest of us blush. But on top of that, he works with scientists and doctors and he's on a, a mission to just unlock our evolutionary potential. I met Wim for the first time in person when uh, our mutual friend Rick Rubin brought him to the Bulletproof Conference two years ago. And it was a guest appearance I hadn't planned. And Wim came up on stage and said, Dave, all right, you're going to do this, my breathing technique. And he has me hyperventilating and holding my breath empty and doing push-ups right before my keynote presentation to the point that I'm like starting to hallucinate a little bit, which happens. Uh, so I gave my, my talk after Wim basically put me through the ringer, but it was awesome. So Wim, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you on. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. So thank you for uh, welcoming me on your show. Uh, you're welcome. So, so Wim, for people listening, and we, we probably a couple hundred thousand people hear the interview the, the first few weeks of this, some of them don't know who you are. And how did you get to be the Iceman? I mean, you, you do stuff that's weird even by my standards, and that's a compliment, by the way, but uh, how did you get to be this way? Yes, um, there is more than meets the eye. Only I felt it, but I did not know what. So if that feeling is nagging you from the inside, you become a soul surgeon. And it brought me into all kinds of disciplines, esotericism, religions, traditions, cultures, and uh, many countries and travelings. And yes, but I couldn't really match up with that feeling until I met the ice cold water just in my backyard in winter time, and that's in Amsterdam when I was seventeen, which is forty years ago, and. I went in, and then I knew the soul search was really on track there. Uh, I felt a connection, deep connection. And from there, because it made me feel so good inside, 
mind body i came back and did it again and again and it became a regular practice and soon i found out that the ice cold water makes you breathe different to become effectively uh, against the exposure of the ice cold you have to breathe deeper into the tissue bring oxygen change the chemistry become alkaline and then suddenly the mind is able uh, to influence into the body and resist the ice cold which is an impact and from there it, yeah it made me feel so good and uh, that all on my command so uh, i began to challenge my body even more see where is the limit but the limit really is far far ahead we lost that we lost the ability to connect within to change our chemistry in the depth of the tissue and therefore uh, there is a slight acidity going on in our tissue past the blood in the tissue and if that stays day in day out like for 10 years or 2 or 20 years then of course we will get these autoimmune diseases inflammation deregulated dna that's logical because the garbage has never been uh, uh, yeah uh, cl- cleansed and this is what breathing does deep right breathing the way i learned it has shown its effectivity in the ice cold and uh, there i did 26 world records only showing yeah <laughs> wow. if you have more control inside over your chemistry through the right way of breathing then yes you are suddenly able to survive in situations or to endure extreme impact not only of cold also of oxygen deprivation like mount everest in shorts or the heat like not drinking a full marathon without a meter of training or a yard of training i'm not a runner but if i <laughs> want it i can run i can do anything because i command in my body that's my little you know my little intro, intro story it it resonates really deeply with me uh, my my new book headstrong is about the mitochondria in our body and I've come to believe that these little tiny bacteria that became uh, basically the batteries in our cells, that they've, they're calling the shots a lot more than, than we like to think they are. And, and they're the ones who say, stop, you'll die, because they have this like, like bacterial level of consciousness that's like, if you push too hard, you'll die. And a lot of our inner conversation about controlling our own biology is actually getting them to make more energy or getting them to, to vibrate the right way or, or to do what they're supposed to do. And I, I, first question for you there is, do you believe that we're, we're communicating with our body down at that level? Or is, is this more of like a, a, a mental game that we're playing with ourselves? Yes, exactly. Very good question. Very deep. Yeah. We are able to program by the neurology of the brain, as long as the body is alkaline, into the DNA, into the genomes, yeah. into the mitochondria, influence with, uh, in the mitochondrial processes by aerobic dissimulation, creating uh, uh, much more ATP. Uh, yeah. you, know, uh, you, you know the ATP, the molecule, oh, yeah. the energy, and all. Yeah, that's your work too. I do it through breathing. And uh, food, of course, is also chemistry. Food must be food. And yes. breath must be deep. That if they go together, then suddenly the mind, the neural activity of the mind is able to reach by neural activity directly into mitochondrial activity, into uh, DNA expression. Uh, it's all there. And you know what? I just, uh, three weeks ago, I was in Michigan in the Wayne State University to do neuroscience. And they had me hooked uh, within a fMRI to see mm-hmm. what's happening in the brain while I'm exposed to cold. So, oh, cool. Yes, <laughs> it was cool. Re- uh, you gotta listen to this. Day two, 
day two, they had me uh, fMRI and exposed by a wetsuit uh, with uh, all kinds of tubes uh, wherein uh, ice water was being poured and right. uh, flowing back and forth. And they really had to go uh, many times because I was warming up the water. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> uh, the power within us is, is big, is great. But uh, something very new, uh, you know, a groundbreaking uh, happened. Uh, uh, the second day I was there, I was not allowed to do anything, not with my mind, and I was only able to do something with my mind, but I did do nothing. So they had me hooked uh, with a temperature sensor on the skin to see if my skin temperature was going down when exposed to ice, water, and yes, it went down drastically, like two times. Two times, seven and a half minutes, and then it went up because then they stopped with the ice water. But then, day three, I went in and I told myself, today I'm going to show the difference of what a thought, what a neural active flow uh, commanded by me uh, is doing within my body related to the skin temperature when exposed to ice water, and it has been shown four times, seven and a half minutes, that the skin temperature was not going down because I programmed it, to, it wow. to do so, and that only by a thought. Now, what I did before, what I did before was breathing to make my body alkaline, and then the neural activity of the mind is suddenly able to go at light speed through the body, into the genomes, into the mitochondria activity, into the uh, adrenal uh, axis, and do it. Very straight. So this shows that the descending neural activity flow after the intervention of the mind and receiving a, a, a ascending neural activity flow, like cold, uh, it comes in, then I decide, you, I, I don't want you to interfere with my bodily processes. And then uh, suddenly this intervention of my mind is able to command the descending neural activity flow to the body to ignite the right amount of epinephrine, adrenaline, uh, to influence into the hypothalamus, the thermal regulation, and thus the skin temperature is not going to go down. This is a huge potential, and uh, I'm waiting now for the results, but they already saw these outcomes, the professors over there, and this will show new light on uh, what the mind is capable of. And that means placebo no longer, no SIBO no longer, just positive thinking, your own, which is very powerful and able to go into any process of the body. And that's the way nature meant it to be. So what do you say related to, say, mitochondria, are we able to uh, go uh, inward by a neural activity? Absolutely, yes. And a whole lot more will come from there. You talk about alkaline and breathing, which is relaxing to me because so many people talk about, oh, if you eat meat, you won't be alkaline, or if you, if you don't drink alkaline water or some other kind of BS. In, in about 1999, I got a feedback machine that taught you how to control how much CO2 or oxygen you were breathing out. It, it was a feedback loop for your breath gas. And the biggest driver of alkalinity is breath because you can hold on to carbon dioxide, which increases acidity, or you can breathe it out, which increases alkalinity. But this isn't talked about in the world of health where we're drinking these you know, fancy water machine things. What's your take on, on alkalinity from food and water versus air? Uh, yes, but, uh, food, water. Air shouldn't be uh, polluted, uh, but it is. It is processed. 
And so we actively and consciously need to uh, intervene. Um, if we breathe better uh, the way we do it, yeah, I do everything through science. So it has been shown in the recent study, uh, it's completed uh, with 48 people, and it showed that everybody, the average alkalinity was a raising to a peak level of 7.8, which the, the normal natural standard uh, should be 7.3, 7.4, where most of us are lower because of processed food and the chemistry and the fine dust in the air and all what, what, what we are doing as a society. Um, we have to uh, learn to deal with that. So it showed uh, that uh, we, in this study, with the right way of breathing, are suddenly very capable to bring back the natural standards mm. for alkalinity. And that's... Just, yes. just with air, you're saying, without any of the other stuff. Yes, just with air. Yes. And, uh, uh, of course, if you drink polluted water, <laughs> or right. if you drink uh, or eat processed food, then the body is not built to uh, take <laughs> that on. So it needs to right. break it down, bring molecules, supplement it. Then uh, it's a whole way, and that takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of stress because it is all sympathetic nervous system activity. And thus stress comes into the body, begins to oxidate, and it is no good. So breath is one way, and food should be uh, should be food, and water should be water, and very and and the rest is positive thinking. You are able within your body by not only positive thinking, it's your neural activity. You know how to maintain balance. You can feel it, and your mind is a big player there. We will show this together with uh, uh, neuroscientific uh, new studies, together with, uh, say, Stanford, uh, Michigan, uh, Germany, uh, uh, Hanover uh, universities. And, and they are all going into these matters like emotion and things. And uh, ah. yeah, we, yeah, man, we, we are doing it. So, well, I'm, yes. Uh, when I, I run uh, 40 Years of Zen, which is uh, the highest in private applied neuroscience brain training facility for executives in Seattle. So if, if you're ever in Seattle and I can get you for a day, we can put clinical grade EEG on your head and, and quantify these states and actually even make them more trainable. So if, if I can ever lure you there for a day, I'll, 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 I'll give you some feedback using custom hardware and software available nowhere else. So. Very soon there. Uh, that, that's in okay. L.A., isn't it? Uh, this is in Seattle. Oh, Seattle. Oh, Seattle. I don't know. Yep. No, but I'm uh, doing right. an American tour very soon. Um, thing is, they already measured with NASA equipment that this, yep. these breathing techniques, if they are well exercised, they bring about theta, delta, and gamma. That We actually train those exact states. Uh, but there's there's some nuances because of the the custom developed hardware we've got where we can quantify them, but also then make them more teachable, so that we can take someone and say, well, you know, th this is uh, th this is the type of delta that you are targeting. So when you do something that's closer uh, to what we're, what Wim has done, we'll give you a reward for it. So when someone wants to to tighten their Wim Hof method, we could actually show them the brain state, give them a beep when they do it right which can speed training. And, I, would love, uh, this, I, I would love it. I think okay. we are able we'll coordinate to get that. In, Yes, uh, 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 we are able within seven, eight minutes to get in a deep state of like meditative state. Normally, okay, we'll, we'll, yes. we'll measure that. Now, here, here's another question. One of my, uh, one of my buddies, uh, Dr. Barry Morgulon, a UCLA surgeon, studied for 20 years with a uh, uh, Chinese lineage that was the root of the Shaolin, uh, Shaolin practice. And he actually trained it with, uh, you know, cover yourself in wet sheets and melt a hole in the glacier by meditating and wrote the mitochondrial meditation that's in Headstrong. And there's 12 living grandmasters of that tradition right now. And I'm, I'm wondering, did you look at ancient Chinese or Tibetan or, or Hindu or shamanic, the, these various states when you were learning this? Or is this entirely sort of just self-taught because you were paying attention? Yes, they, uh, in, 
in uh, New York, they call me a Pritak Buddha. A Pritak Buddha, <laughs> yeah, somebody who has become enlightened uh, by, uh, yeah. out of the tradition of Buddhism. And I say, boo, the Buddha is a you. <laughs> you know, the Buddha is everybody of us. No, it doesn't so, matter. So that, I never, I, I never yeah. had the money to go to Tibet and, uh, or to China uh, in those days when I began to mm -hmm. do uh, the cold practice. I just uh, began to do it by myself, and uh, I found out that the cold is my teacher, my guru. And then, uh, uh, like five years ago, I met a, a Rinpoche, who is an expert in uh, Gutumo, and I told mm -hmm. him about my practices, etc. And I think it's very nice, you know, and there are like 12 masters, but uh, what I bring to the world is the actually the, the essence of Buddhism, and that is compassion. <laughs> and compassion <coughs> is love. Love is composed yeah. now and scientifically endorsed as being happiness, strength, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, happiness, strength, and uh, uh, health. And those are related to the endocrine system and the uh, immune system. And now that I have translated into data, and without speculation, everybody is very able yeah. and it is very accessible and very effective in just a couple of days to get into the autonomic nervous system level, which makes it where normally those practices take like years. And, yes. uh, and that's what we needed because we have a different lifestyle, a different uh, way of our, our mind works different in the West, yet it is very dominant. It takes over all the world, but has no peace within itself. So we have shown now how to effectively, in the rhythm of our, our Western mind, how to control the parasympathetic nervous system, the peace bringer within, and the sympathetic nervous system, which is more related to our daily actions, the, neocortex, so the deeper limbic system and brainstem is within our control, parasympathetic nervous system, the peace and all, it is uh, being controlled, uh, uh, entered, as well as the sympathetic nervous system. You know, uh, when those two systems are uh, able to be tapped into, then you have more sense of control, absolute more sense of control, over your life, over your energy management, over health, happiness, and strength. So, yeah, I know those people. I've been doing uh, Kung Fu, Karate, Zen, uh -huh. Chuan, Pencha, Pencha Xilat, Sufism, Dervishim, all those <laughs> uh, disciplines I went into wholehearted. But nice. the cold, yes, as you say, nice, I say eyes. Eyes is nice. <laughs> 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 that's that's so, where I got it. You and I have to say respect and chapeau for what you have done. But oh, we have to you, and and linking up together. Together we are stronger, yeah. man. And uh, yeah, I love it. The the definition of enlightenment is, is something that I, I've been interested in for a long time. I I have been to Tibet. I was I was fortunate uh, to to get three months to travel around and learn meditation from the masters and. Uh, to freeze my ass off at 18,000 feet on, on Mount Kailash and uh, to push my limits, we'll put it that way. And the definition of enlightenment that I ended up with is that it, it's when you have full awareness of and control over every single cell in your body because the cells themselves sense the world around you and they're connected to the world, they're connected to the earth, they're connected to other people. And it's, it's getting rid of the lies you tell yourself and the beliefs you have, the self-limiting beliefs that sit between you and this level of awareness and control. And I'm nowhere near it, it, where I think I can go and, and would, would in no way call myself enlightened, but I, I can see that there's a possibility of having that. And I can see what cold does. Uh, and, and thanks to your work, I mean, I have a digitally controlled cold tub downstairs where I can dial in the temperature and it'll hold it there. Yeah. And I have a cryotherapy machine and I've got a oxygen restriction things and atmosphere pressure changing chambers and all this crazy stuff because pushing your cells seems to do something to your brain. But I don't know that I really know all the things it does, but it sounds like you may have more data on that than, than the average person by a long shot. 
what do you think of that definition of enlightenment? Is that in alignment with, with what you've seen, or do you even have a definition of it? Yes. Uh, the natural tendency of the mind is to gather and to attract uh, matter. So uh, if we learn to how to disassociate with matter consciously, then, uh, then everybody becomes not uh, burdened with the heaviness of matter. It becomes enlightened while being. It's just physiology. So now I've shown in Michigan, in the fMRI, how to disassociate from ice cold on your body and thus have control over the ice yes. cold. And everything we come across in our lives is impact. Impact could be heat, cold, uh, oxygen deprivation. It could be grief. It could be back cells, yes. bacteria, virus. It could be stress. Any, it's all translated into uh, matter. Matter uh, and impact on our body by resonance, non-seen and seen. It is all impact on our body, on our nervous system, uh, on our neurology. And there in the neurology, we have a cap capability to disassociate from the impact uh, on our physiology. And I just proved it, and it's going to be a new dimension where people learn <laughs> the ability, a, the natural ability to disassociate or to become an enlightened as a physiological entity within our uh, power. This will happen in our lifetime. Just for people listening, Wim, I, I fully endorse what you're saying. It, it's doable. And just your body will tell you... A, 10,000 times a day, you're going to die if you do that, and it's always lying, unless you actually die. But it, you have so much capacity before you get to that point that it's the fear that, that's holding you back. And you've done something weird where everyone I know who knows you, including me, says the same thing. He's crazy, <laughs> and we always say that as a I compliment. I am, I am, I'm uh, in, in that you're fearless, yes. right? That's what we mean, is that you're fearless, not crazy, but we always say crazy, yeah. because it makes it makes the things you do appear crazy, but you're not at all crazy. You're, you're smart, and you're just unafraid in a way that I don't know anyone else is, but like, how do, how do the rest of us get to that level of unafraid, unafraidness, if that's a word? Yes, uh, of being, yeah, unafraidness, fearless, uh, yeah. or crazy about life. There you go. If you become crazy, if you if, remember the mother lifting up a car because her son is underneath. Yes. The love, real love, will uh, is stronger than the universe. And real mm -hmm. love, you will find if you go into yourself, into the real essence, not learned in the schools, but learned within ourselves. It's there. And as it is not in the schools, we are changing the books in the university, and we did, already did on uh, biology and, uh, mm -hmm. and physics. Uh, we showed that the autonomic nervous system can be influenced uh, together with the endocrine system and the innate immune system, all considered to be not influenceable by uh, human will. Now it is, and now our, our, we are showing by scientific research, that we are able to get into the brain and go into a, essence, a direct essence, the soul, experience it, be it like pure awareness, disassociation from matter, as I explained before, then become awareness. And that awareness is so beyond fear is so being and feeling you to be in the essence, being at home, nobody can damage you. And if you just hold a little of that within you, you know it's love, you know it's stronger than the universe and you can challenge yourself in a number, I, 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 I've been in thousands of situations, challenges, and I always have this connection with my essence. 
with my soul. So you're you're using love to turn off your fear. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, in in the work that I've done, uh, uh, in the work especially with the neurofeedback, I focus on on gratitude first as a gateway to enable you to forgive uh, harms so that you're more capable of love. In your view of the world, how important is the sense of gratitude versus the sense of love? And, and where does forgiveness come into, to, into play for you or does it? Yes, gratitude I have every day for, you know, when I rise. Yeah, it's what, mm-hmm. I, uh, what in yoga, the Surya Namaskar, it mm-hmm. all begins with that. And uh, I, I just have it natural. Uh, the sun is so beautiful. The Surya, they call it in uh, Sanskrit. Doesn't matter. The energy is there. We can link up. We can fulfill our purpose. And you know what? Forgiveness. It, there is no good to get if you hate people, <laughs> because then you become yes. negative in your thoughts, and they will yes. go back into your mitochondria, your DNA genomes, and they are destructive. You better yes. be. You better. You better be positive. And in in line with the love, and then the soul will express itself. How much time do you spend worrying about politics? Uh, to me, I don't see politicians. <laughs> I see uh, people uh, who are eager uh, to deal with their own insecurity, going into power. Um, yes, but if I get the chance to get into healthcare. And we will. We are into regular healthcare, getting into it. Then that's power beyond politics. Yeah. That where politics was about uh, uh, debating and and uh, uh, yeah, uh, who is the best and what is the best. I do it by science. Actually, I'm a politician. Yeah. I'm a, a, right. a cold-hearted politician, shown with facts <laughs> and data, non-speculatively, the best way. So. Uh, I- we are into. I like that. Yes. Uh, what the reason I was asking about that was more like from a personal perspective because you, you talk about how hating other people costs your mitochondria, it causes genetic changes, and we know this. It's called epigenetics. That science is yes. done. We don't know all the mechanisms. In fact, I think mitochondria are the gateway to epigenetics, but we know flat out you hate. It costs you biologically. But I, the reason I'm saying that is, is there's a lot of people listening on both sides of the political divide in whatever country they're in. Uh, who are spending a lot of time worrying and hating about politics, which is affecting them genetically. And I'm I'm guessing that you spend almost none of your cycles even paying attention to that stuff, much less worrying or thinking or hating. Uh, just just looking for a little yes. like like what do you personally do? Oh yeah, no no politics uh, politics bollocks almost the same. <laughs> there you go. They're bad for your mitochondria, right? <laughs> yes yes yes. We we need to unify the world. And not be in different uh, political parties. Like it, it is normal to, uh, like a controversial thinking is uh, uh, creating tensions. And one wants to be better than the other. It's like uh, the Islam wants to be better than the Christianism and Christianity yeah. and, uh, and the religions and now it's politics. It's the same thing. Before uh, they, they go past the real essence, the, the soul. You know what I think? We should uh, uh, be able to guarantee for every mother in the world that, uh, to be able to guarantee happiness, strength, and health for a kid, regardless of nationality, yeah. culture, background, whatsoever. That the there most essential of our planet is getting back and from happiness, strength, and health. Harmony with nature is a logical step so then we have the uh, problems uh, 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 solved. Another thing about food, when food is food and we don't eat too much, we breathe more. And I want to do the, uh, uh, want to do the scientific studies on how much more ATP is being produced because uh, 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 caused uh, by the right uh, way of breathing. And then uh, the food, the intermittent fasting, things like that. I do it already 40 years. And uh, uh, to me, it yeah. was a natural thing. And it brings about the right away of energy, 
it makes the body go into the digestive processes, and then it get into a fast, then the mitochondrial activity is being optimized, the serotonin in the body, which is the cycles in the brain, they get the ketones, and it's all there. We have yeah. to go back it, to simplicity. And that's what we do right here, right now. So thank you. All right, I'm going to ask you a question I've never asked on, on, on Bulletproof Radio in 300 and, 360 or so episodes. Uh, do you believe in reincarnation? Yes. I, uh, you, it, you do. It doesn't I, end. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Did it, it didn't begin with our birth. And it doesn't end with our uh, yeah. death. It's uh, just coming into a body uh, 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 which needs a preceding power uh, uh, and then being able to get into a body. And when the body is not functioning anymore, then it, it really is not stopping. It's just uh, soulless. And then the body is not uh, yeah, necessary anymore. So, yes, there is an afterlife okay. and a before life. And it all has purpose. So you, <laughs> it is also Buddha or Rumi who is, who is saying, but I can tell you the same thing, all good deeds will stay and all bad deeds will, yeah, will be no good on your record. And, uh, right. and whatever uh, the way we understand it, the good is the good and will always remain good. You better be good. I, I like that. And, and the, the reason I'm asking is that I'm trying to figure out a, a rational explanation for why you, you even at a young age, you know, 17, you're doing all these things. And for 40 years, you've practiced intermittent fasting, even though no one taught you that. So either you magically just, just figured all this stuff out, or you came in with it. And I, I'm not going to say that I know the exact answer there, but uh, it, it it sounds to it sounds to me like like you had a, you had a good start at, at least uh, just just from a, an external perspective. So, uh, th thanks for going there and answering that question. That's always controversial, at least for some people. Yes, okay, I, I, I want to make sure that listeners who aren't familiar with your work get at least a quick understanding of the three pillars. Uh, by the way, everyone listening, you need to read Wim Hof's book. Uh, becoming the Iceman, that, that'll tell you all the stuff you, you need to know about this. But can you walk us through the three pillars of, of your method? Yes, of course, Dave. Um, that is breathing. And breathing is caused by the cold. Uh, so the cold as well. Breathing uh, into the tissue is number one. Number two, the cold is training the vascular system to optimize the vascular system to its natural, beautiful standards. And then the last one is the mind, mindset. And we are doing uh, scientific research on all of those limbs, and they appear to be very effective and very accessible for everybody in just a very short period of time, that means a couple of days, to learn to tap into the autonomic nervous system relate, uh, related to the innate immune system and endocrine system, that means Happiness, health, and strength is all, uh, is guaranteed, and uh, it's up to you to do it. So uh, people are able to get into the science, read up, and see, oh, yeah, the no speculation. It's just a matter, are you going to do it? Then this happens. If you don't do it, hey, you're all free. It's no dogma behind. But the three pillars, breath, cold exposure, gradual cold exposure, and mindset, those are the three pillars of this method. And they have been uh, uh, exercised like 40 years of field work in, uh, in all kinds of extreme conditions, like uh, the North Pole, polar circles, uh, 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 on the highest mountains of the world, and all in shorts. I mean, that's exposing myself like a guinea pig. And then uh, I passed it on to... Um, uh, laboratory settings, and they found out that we are the first ones to get into the autonomic nervous system and uh, all the other systems uh, going so deep more than ever before or uh, uh, scientifically uh, in, the, in the scientific history written. So uh, three pillars, breath, cold, mindset. All right, and, and to do the cold therapy for someone who's listening, they've got 20 extra pounds of fat, they probably aren't in very good shape, 
What's the first step to getting used to cold? The first step is your mindset. You, you have to know that by now, or otherwise you get into the scientific studies, we are able just in a couple of days, like the first test group I, I took, uh, to, uh, the first 18 people I took uh, of a scientific study without prior experience in the cold, four days later, they were able to endure for five hours in their shores, outside in wintertime in a Polish mountain from minus 10 centigrade, which is really, uh, uh, really cold, below Fahrenheit uh, 31, it's like maybe 20 or something, and going to minus 28 in a period of five hours. And they all were very able to do that. And that only in four, uh, four days. So anybody, yeah. actually, nobody has, a, a, if, a, if he hasn't got a real serious condition, then uh, all people will only benefit from gradually going into the cold. And how it is done, by taking, uh, after your hot, warm shower, you take a cold one for 30 seconds. That uh, w for one week. Then the vascular system, which is 80,000 miles in each and every one of us, is being optimized in its condition. All the little primitive muscles, plus the reflexes of the capillaries, they're all optimized. Then suddenly you are able, in day eight, you can feel it, uh, you are able to go directly into the cold for, say, a one minute, no problem. And you know what happens? A whole lot more energy because all those little muscles, all those uh, reflexes of the vascular system related to the autonomic nervous system, it's all working the way nature meant it to be. They are bringing the oxygen a whole lot better to the immune cells. The heartbeat is going to go down with 30 uh, uh, beats a, a minute, 24 hours a day, a lot less stress. Thus, it's all logical. And uh, yeah, very uh, a cold shower a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> uh, I, I love it. And I, I definitely echo that advice in, in Headstrong in my book saying, look, this is free. It's not that hard to do. Uh, you have a beard, so I don't know the answer to this, but if I put cold water on my face and chest, it makes shaving really difficult, and I haven't figured out that. Yes, so, it's because the capillary is close. So, so then here, here's a, this is just a, a random, maybe a guy-only question. If I do my 30 seconds to one minute of cold water that I do in the morning, if I put warm water on again, just enough to soften my beard so I can shave, am I losing the good effect? Because I don't know the answer to this. No, absolutely not. It, all right. The capillaries are, uh, the skin is the biggest uh, organ. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, Paul Newman, yeah. every time before he uh, got, uh, got into a performance, he had his uh, head, uh, his face, for 30 seconds into uh, ice water. Yeah. Made him to, feel for good. the dive reflex. Yes. I, I actually, uh, for a long time when I was first writing the Bulletproof Diet, Every night, I, I had a pan in the freezer that was half full of water, and I would just add tap water on top till it was frozen, and I'd use a snorkel, and I had two minutes of <laughs> freezing face. And I want to it see totally, that <laughs> it totally works. Like it's so ridiculous, ah. but just cold face is is it changes your whole brain. I it, it's people don't believe it till they try it, but it, it's it's real. I, I got out of that habit just because I have bigger gear. Um, have you ever played with the Vasper system? This is where you, you exercise doing cardio, sitting on, on uh, running ice water with ice water compression around your arms and legs uh, and even on your head. Ah. I, I, have, I have one of those downstairs. I've been doing it, and it's, it's, it's interesting. But is this the type of thing you've ever played with? Yes. No, I, I, I never played with any device. But I always had my, uh, you know, washed my uh, face with the uh, ice water. I loved okay. it, and I know the refreshing uh, experience of that. And uh, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, good, good. But what you're saying about this, this five hours in cold reminds me, when I was in Tibet on Mount Kailash, 
I had a porter and I was, I was traveling with this uh, attractive young woman and this, this young Tibetan guy who was maybe 100 pounds, he was walking around, it's 10 degrees below zero, he's walking around in thin blue jeans and like fake Nike tennis shoes and, uh, and a little leather jacket. And, and, and I'm wearing a parka and, and it, it, I'm trained in high altitude mountaineering and hypothermia and all that. And this guy is showing off for the girl. So he jumps on a frozen river and falls in up to his crotch. Okay. Now I'm thinking, it's a 30 mile an hour wind, it's 10 degrees below zero. And I look at the guy, I'm like, God, this guy's gonna die. He's gonna get hypothermia. So I had an extra parka and I take it out of my bag and I hand him the parka and he just looks at me, thinks I want him to carry it, takes my jacket and puts it in his backpack <laughs> and keeps walking. Wow, wow, wow. And I was, I was like, I am so shamed by this guy. Like, like he's 10 times tougher than I am. He, he can carry twice what I can carry. He weighs half what I weigh. And he's like, he's impervious to the elements. And he's just this little Tibetan guy, maybe you know, 22, 24 years old. I, I was humbled by seeing that. But that, that's an example of what we're capable of just when that's what you do. Yes. So, so t just a proof point to what you said. Yes, it is. Uh, I got also the, the first time I went to India with the, uh, you know, soul search. I thought mm -hmm. uh, India is going to be great and, uh, and uh, very excited. But the man who impressed me most was a little guy sitting in New Delhi somewhere in, in the traffic, all day long, cross-legged, and he made me a little, I don't know, looking like a, 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 a cigarette, but it's not cigarette, it's just some herbs, and he gives it to, to smell. And it took him a quarter of an hour, and he asked me a fragment of a rupee. Uh, such a mm -hmm. dedication, such a peace, such a serenity. We, with our Western minds, we never expose our bodies to, uh, say, uh, the, the ice cold or the heat or sit down all day long and have such a patience, such a resilience. While we all have it, and that's a piece of physiology, we better get acquainted a little bit with that again, and become aware that we are able uh, to tap into those systems because we suffer too much of autoimmune diseases, cancer, depression, and all that. And that's because of our way of thinking. See what uh, this beautiful example you just gave of the parka, and he puts it in. He's got a different mindset altogether. Yeah. Like this little man in the, in the middle of the traffic. It, 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 uh, those were the people who impressed me most, not the gurus, not uh, the, uh, the the sadhus and, and all those people who are, uh, you know, uh, uh, like exhibiting what they are capable of. No, I want to go into the depth, which is simply, simply there. And those people uh, have, it, have it still paired with humbleness. And that's beautiful. It, it is it is beautiful when you are lucky enough to experience that, and I think a lot of a lot of times when you're in the West, you you don't see it, or if it happens around you, you're not paying attention to it. So even if you could have seen it, you didn't, you weren't practicing awareness, so it wasn't present for you. Now, I I have a, another question for you. I spent a lot of my my time when I realized my brain wasn't working as well as I wanted it to in my mid twenties. I, I used to weigh three hundred pounds. I've lost about 100 pounds of fat, and I, I've really changed my brain and my awareness levels, but I started really pushing on the personal development and meditation and, and spirituality and just learning those, those parts of myself, but I was fat and tired all the time, and, and I, I've come to the conclusion, and I, I don't know if you're going to agree with this. That's why I'm asking you. I concluded that it's easier to become more aware and to have uh, and, and to have, have that, that personal growth when your cells work better. That fixing your hardware is, is something you should do before you work on your software. Yeah. Because it, it's easier to work on your, on your software there. But what you're saying is if you get your software right, your hardware will just fix itself. So which is it? Uh, uh, I say uh, just go back to the way naturally we are meant to be. Our happiness, strength, and health, that's, that should be the guide. 
and whatever it takes. Uh, uh, not everybody needs to uh, go into weight loss to be happy, strong and healthy. Correct. So well, the Buddha was kind of thin, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so yes. So let your belly up. Uh, uh, being slim or being fat, it doesn't matter. Being strong, ha happy, and healthy, that's the yeah. thing. That's the guy. Uh, if you are happy, strong, and healthy, you radiate the right energy. Then that's love because you resonate. You have people resonate with your energy, which is a good one. So just become happy, strong, and healthy. Very simple. Then the soul is expressing through you, uh, radiating energy like the sun. And and uh, so we keep it simple. And then uh, if you need, to, uh, if you are not happy because you got too much weight, or if it is only a concept, no. Just once again, uh, keep it simple: happy, strong, and healthy. That it is. Yeah. And we are built to be able to do that. So uh, that, yeah. that's it. Now you've reversed autoimmune conditions uh, like lupus, <laughs> asthma, Parkinson's, arthritis, uh, Hashimoto's, I'm guessing, uh, using cold and mindfulness, which is, which is pretty profound. What's the most profound reversal you've seen using the Wim Hof method? Well, yeah, depression is also a big one. I, yeah. I, I want to tackle all these things, you know, the anxiety together with the, with the Stanford University, uh, or the, the, Thought and mind power together with the, yeah, a different uh, with, with Mich Michigan and the uh, uh, emotional reactivity in uh, Hanover. But I see it mm -hmm. every day. We got a community of thir uh, like 35 or 40,000 uh, people who are actively doing this with all kinds of conditions, yes or no. And I see miracles happening just because people get back uh, again into the simplicity. Breath work, uh, cold exposure is exposing yourself to the natural elements. We got a body that is able to balance out with that and then become uh, optimized. That's logic. And then uh, the mindset, the mindset should be positive. Then uh, incredible, incredible cures come about. If the body is able to get into its own balance, into its own plasticity, into its own mitochondrial surplus, then it directly heals itself. But we are going so fast that we consume all the energy and we keep on a sympathetic nervous system activity, thus the body hasn't got a moment of relief. But if we learn consciously to bring the body from anxiety into relief modus, it works on cell level, mitochondrial level, ATP comes free, plasticity in the body and neuroplasticity in the mind is a fact. And then, you know, all these diseases you uh, uh, just mentioned, they, they, they cure, they are cured then. The body has the power to cure itself, but we have we need to make the body able to cure itself. And now we got this method, and uh, together with food, then it's very able to uh, find uh, miraculous, almost seemingly miraculous cures. Mother Nature knows. We have to just go back to Mother Nature. And, uh, and because uh, it sometimes uh, looks like, yeah, we can cure everything and cancer and this and that, no, I go through science, but I see mir miracles happen every day. I got people to thank me, be, uh, 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 mothers who have a depressed son, they, and, and they lose their depression. You make people happy. You become enlightened only because of that. Or people with arthritis, yeah. like to, for 20 years, and uh, having 15 medicines. No medicines anymore, no pain, fully back in control, being able to do anything with their body. It's, it's a miracle, and that's life. We bring people back yeah. to the life, and that's a miracle. And from there, a new journey starts. So that's what we do. 
Well, it, it, you do it really, really well and in, in a way that is, is fantastic. You have the Wim Hof Academy. How many people a year are you teaching now? Yeah, we select uh, the people on their schooling, uh, uh, educational and schooling uh, abilities because we want uh, quality. It's all in the beginning, but anybody who is motivated can join this uh, academy. There are uh, uh, doctors, uh, psychiatrists, but also carpenters. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. As long as you are uh, uh, into humanity, into freedom, into belief, then you're able to digest all the physiology. Being a doctor or a carpenter, it doesn't matter. You have the healing uh, capacity and ability if you are just righteously in the essence of yourself. And uh, we hand over a couple of tools uh, back, uh, backed up with uh, physiology and educational skills. And so uh, I just last weekend had uh, 30, no, uh, th yeah, four, uh, 40 new Dutch uh, teachers, upcoming teachers, instructors. But in America, we do it uh, too. We, we just, uh, uh, and in Australia, next week I go to Australia. There we will do a trainer's course as well. It's really spreading. And uh, yeah, actually, uh, we are too little to take it on all but, and, and selecting. But uh, this is going to be, uh, you know, uh, through the signs, it needs to be spread throughout the world. It's something so accessible and so simple. And I want to join up with the right people like yourself. To, to bring back nature, the essence, the soul, the non-comprehensible, bringing it back to simple, simplicity called love and life. Well, Wim, you're, you're connected with some of the, the most influential and good people that I know uh, all, already. And certainly I, I'll help you. And I, I definitely uh, give you credit in, uh, in Headstrong and talk about your method just at a high level and recommend it. So for, for people listening, if this conversation inspired you, and I, I hope it did, then you should check out the Wim Hof Academy and at a minimum read Wim's book because there's some great knowledge here. And, and this isn't something that takes you 20 years to do. That, that whole idea of taking decades to do something, it doesn't make sense in the world we live in right now when you can do it in weeks, months, or a year and, and radically transform what your brain can do. And, and that's certainly my path, that's Wim's path, and, and there are many others working on, on solving this problem. So it, it's, uh, it's an honor to have you on the show, Wim. And I, I have a question for you that I've asked every guest, and I have no idea what you're going to say. It, if someone came to you tomorrow and they said, Wim, I want to perform better at everything I do in my life, what are the three most important things I need to learn? What would you tell them? How do you summarize all of this in just three points? Cold shower, deeper breathing, belief. <laughs> okay, that was predictable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, it is as simple as it is. <laughs> great, great answer. And uh, I appreciate you being on Bulletproof Radio. Is there anything else you'd like to share, URLs you'd like to send people to or any other thing like that? I just uh, love everybody. That's one. Two, a lot of greetings to... Uh, Rick and his wife. In fact, he was teaching me your breathing methods because I've done I've done Stan Groff. I've done a bunch of different breathing methods. So I actually was doing uh, your like perfectly done method with Rick in Hawaii uh, not that long ago, and we were talking about you. So it was uh, it's kind of funny to bring it full circle. But all wow, full circle. It, it is indeed. Well, Wim, thanks for your time and thanks for your energy and for your love and passion and for sharing all the good stuff you do. I uh, I am definitely a fan and admirer, and I will help you spread the good word. Dave, thank you very much. You made me smile. All right. Yeah, Enjoy your day. Thanks, thanks right. man.